bringing video game designs to real life, it's very challenging. It, it's a you know, a big process of prototyping and testing, you know, really trying to find a happy medium between the original art and source material and then adapting it to our model and how we could make it functional for those, you know, suits to be able to walk around. In the Anthem world, it's a dangerous world and you need these things to survive in that world. They're not mass produced, they're built by artisans. You needed to be something that you could get from this planet, which was metals and leather and rubber and cloth. And I'd give it that feeling like, yeah, maybe this is something somebody could actually construct. We made sure that these suits were super functional so that uh, when, when it came time to build this stuff, a lot of the questions were answered. So the process of building the stilts was pretty difficult because uh, between all the suits, we have three different styles. The first thing that, that we start off with is making sure that we have the right height for, for the actor. The second thing I'd say we move into making sure that we have the right foot position. If they don't have the right foot position, they're going to be extremely uncomfortable and won't be able to wear it and won't be able to walk. For suits like this, it's very important for us to have the models chosen early so we can build everything around them. It's adapting their proportions and building the suit to fit them, but it's also uh, building onto their frame to get the silhouettes that we're looking for. One of the main strategies we used uh, was building custom-made muscle suits. The muscle suits are basically spandex suits that have uh, foam padding inside to build out proportions. You need to build out their hips and their waist and their shoulders and their arms and everything in between. And then from there, we design our 3D models and our 3D prints and fabricate and rig as we need to around the original base. We use their models to make sure every detail was spot on and translated as you know, accurately as possible to the real world. So once we nail down the scaling and we're happy with the, the fit of, of all the 3D prints, we take them to body shop. So in body shopping, they'll sand out all the imperfections, get it all prepped for either molding and casting uh, or painting. And once the molds are created, things will get cast in different resins and urethanes. The paint job and weathering is what really kind of brought a lot of the pieces to life. Start by figuring out our color palette and then going in and testing different products. There's lots of meticulous taping off of sections that are going to get different weathering to make sure all the colors are in the right spot, in the right tone, and then all the dirt that's layered on top, wiped away, layered on top again. It's a lot of meticulous work that goes into making something look like real metal and also dirty, even though it's not. Working on this project was definitely one of the biggest challenges we've undertaken. We always love the challenges because it forces us to learn and adapt and, and grow as artists as well. The uh, attention to detail was phenomenal. And just the work that went in those things was, it just kept getting better every single week we saw it. I think everyone's gonna be blown away.